welcome. My name is James Packman and I'm the Rector, the Senior Minister here at Holy Trinity Church in Nailsy and I'm delighted to welcome you to Sunday Catch Up. Sunday Catch Up is where we take the Bible reading and the talk from last Sunday but make it available on the internet to those who might be blessed and encouraged by it and I hope that you are. If you would like to be in contact with us, please do get in contact. The details are on our church website, uh, www.htnailsy.org.uk. Please let us know if you've got any questions or if there's any way in which we can help you at this time. Thank you for joining us. I'm glad you can. May God bless you today. Although it's going to be a very short reading, you'll find it on page 543. Psalm 1, beginning at verse 1. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked, or stand in the way that sinners take, or sit in the company of mockers, but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in the season, and whose leaf does not wither, whatever they do prospers. Good morning. Good to be with you to uh, open up this wonderful subject of being blessed by God. You know that God loves you. Yeah? You know that God loves you. Yeah? Be filled with thankfulness to the Lord, for he loves you. Blessed is the one who does not walk in step with the wicked but whose delight is in the law of the Lord. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water. Wonderful words from Psalm 1. Blessed by God. We live under God's generous hand of gracious blessing. Shoo! Thank you. <laughs> what do we mean when we say God bless you? What do we mean when we say God bless you? It's a big question, isn't it? Well, let's think of a few things. First of all, we are blessed. We are so blessed. We are all blessed. The natural rhythms of life on earth that God has given for all mankind to enjoy. He is the creator, the designer, the sustainer. He's made everything richly for us to enjoy. If we look to him and give thanks to him, we receive it as a blessing. Some of us have been studying Romans recently. Romans chapter 1 makes it very clear that if we ignore the fact that God has given us all these wonderful things and take it all for granted, we're just like the wicked. We need to say thank you. We have no excuse for not recognizing the hand of God in creation. There are so many things that God has blessed us with. Take, for example... The flowers of the field. Do you get down on your hands and knees and stick your nose in one? Maybe get a little book out and try and identify them, as we were doing as we were walking in the Pyrenees last week. Absolutely fantastic. Saw some wonderful flowers. God has richly blessed us with the wonders of his creation. Oh, near at home. The blessings of home and family 
the blessings of security and hope, the blessings of occupation and society, all these human riches that we can so easily take for granted. They are blessings of God. Or the sun and the rain and the harvest, the beauty of the world, the mountains. When you go up on the hills, what do you do? Wow, praise God. Seeing how great thou art on the top of your favorite hill, it's a wonderful thing to do, a great way of worshiping God. These are common blessings to all mankind. But you and I know that we are specially blessed because God has chosen us to be part of his family. And in Christ, we can praise him for all our spiritual blessings. I always go to Ephesians chapter 1 for this. Praise God for all our spiritual blessings in Christ, which include the Father chose us to be his holy people. He adopted us as his children. He freely gave us grace in Jesus. We are redeemed by the cross of Christ. We are forgiven of all our sins. We are spirit-blessed. God has given us so much. Do you feel blessed today? You are blessed. You may have something which is distracting you from feeling blessed. Maybe you are suffering. Maybe there are some worries. Maybe something has upset you and you don't feel particularly blessed today. Then I want to bless you. And I will say to you what God told the Aaronic priests to say to God's chosen people when they gathered together. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. You need that peace in your heart, don't you? that peace that only God can give us, that shalom peace, the blessing of God's peace. Shalom is, is not just a greeting that people in um, the Holy Land say to one another. Shalom, shalom, shalom. It means being wrapped around in the love of God. It means coming home. And it's not just personal, it's corporate. It's about knocking on the door, opening it, and coming in, and you find all your family there wanting to welcome you and to give you a celebration party. And you're at peace. You are forgiven. You are accepted. You are held in the love of God. That is the peace of the Lord. I'm home. That's what shalom means. I've come home and I am held in the arms of God. I love it when James at the end of the service talks about being wrapped in the arms of the Father, in the love of the Father. Yeah? Take it to heart. That's a corporate thing, not just a personal thing for all of us. And you know, God commands blessing on a church when, according to Psalm 133, when God's people live together in unity, there the Lord bestows his blessing, even life forevermore. So what we need to do if we want to know God's blessing is to make sure that we're all going in the same direction. To make sure that we are united as the body of Christ. To be certain that we are following the leadership that God has given to us in James and, and our PCC, teasing out the vision for us as God's people. And what is that at the moment? Well, it's about pray, bless, invite, and live questionable lives. That's what we should all be doing, praying, blessing, inviting, and living questionable lives. And if we do it all together and we're all committed to doing the same thing, 
one in the Spirit, then God commands the blessing here. Do you want this church to be blessed? Get on board. Pray, bless, invite. That's the way we're going. Praise God. So back to Psalm 1. How can I, personally, live a blessed life? Uh, And uh, blessed is the one who becomes like a tree. That's really what the first few verses of Psalm 1 says. Blessed are you when you become like a tree. That sort of tree. One that stands firm when the winds blow strong, when there's a drought, because its roots are deep. How can I live a blessed life? Well, this psalm tells us very clearly. The one whose delight is in the law of the Lord and who meditates on his law day and night. Now, when, when the psalms were written, what did they have? They had knowledge of the past and the Torah was the first five books of uh, what we call the Old Testament. That's what they had to look at. Meditating on the law of the Lord. And if they did that, they would learn about all the history of God's people, how God had brought them out of slavery and was with them. And they would also learn the commandments, things that were written on tablets of stone, but lots more besides. Dig deep daily. Dig deep daily into the word of the Lord and you will have roots that go deep and you will stand firm. That's, that's really the message of this psalm. But the word of the Lord, Jesus is the word of the Lord. He in himself is the Torah made manifest. He shows us what God is like. So spending time with Jesus is what this means. Or he rewrote the law of the Lord, if you like, in the Sermon on the Mount. And so I turn to the Beatitudes. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when you're insulted on Jesus' behalf. Blessed are you. Now, uh, those beatitudes, as we call them, in the Sermon on the Mount, they're a description of the character of Jesus. Where it says blessed, you could just put the name Jesus. Jesus is poor in spirit. Jesus mourns about the sinfulness of the world. Jesus is meek. Jesus hungers and thirsts for righteousness and truth, justice, integrity. Jesus is merciful. Jesus is pure in heart. Jesus comes as the peacemaker between God and humanity. And Jesus was persecuted because of the kingdom of God, and he brought it into being. Those attitudes are what automatically grow within the Christian as we keep walking with Jesus day by day. And we, too, will be like that. Of course, he says it's not easy, because all those blessings come with a a bad side to them, don't they? You're going to suffer. You're going to have a hard life. Life isn't going to be easy. If you're working hard as an advocate for somebody who has been downtrodden, who hasn't got enough money, or who is trying, they're desperate to, to live life, and they can't, and they need your help, you're going to have a tough life. Being a peacemaker, standing up for justice and truth. As we do those things, life will not be easy. But that is the life of blessing, says Jesus. That is the life of blessedness. Know that you are blessed by God. He loves you.
Know that you are blessed. That's supposed to be an automated gif. It should say, God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. And it goes round and round and round. But unfortunately, moving it from one system to another, it got lost. God loves me. Say it. Amen. You are blessed. You are blessed. So, what's the question that we need to go with? How can I bless someone today? That's the question we need to go away with. How can I bless someone today? And that's the question I want us all to ask at the beginning of every day. How can I bless someone today? Well, turn to your little cards. I hope you've still got one of these, either stuck on the fridge or in your Bible or next to the telephone or wherever you keep these little cards. Pray, bless, invite. And we can bless by asking that God blesses people. Asking God to show us who it is we're supposed to be blessing today. And asking him to show us how to bless that person today. Maybe it's with words of affirmation. Maybe, maybe it's with a random act of kindness, something out of the blue. Maybe giving that person a gift. Or maybe through offering some form of hospitality. Whatever it is, we can all bless people in that sort of a way. But the real blessing is to know the face of God looking at us with graciousness and giving us peace. That is the real blessing. And that's the blessing that we want to give to the people in our neighborhood. That they may know that God's face is looking towards them in mercy. You see, sin is simply doing this. Turning your back on God. That's all sin is. And what God wants to do is to look us in the face with mercy and blessing. All human beings have to do is turn round and look to God. And he's done everything that's necessary to bring us back to himself. It is so simple. Jesus didn't come to start a new religion. He came to introduce people to his Father, who loves us. He loves me, he loves you. We turn away from God because we don't believe it. He loves us. He wants us to turn back to him and receive the peace that passes all understanding. That is God's blessing to you and to me and that we need to share with those around us. So, the prayer comes at the end. As we pray for those around us and bless them with our words and actions and invite them to connect with you, we pray that you will draw near to them and increase their faith, hope, and love in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, Thank you very much, Karen. Um, We're going to sing now and there's kind of an obvious song to sing. It's called The Blessing. Um, And it is, it's taking that blessing that was mentioned from Numbers chapter 6 and praying it, singing it for each other. And we're going to do that now. So um, if you are able, do stand and we'll sing this and then another song, Great is the Lord, after that.